Change of dressing first thing in the morning. She should have a comfortable night. Mm -hmm. Dr. Longman, the patient you found. What's the answer, sir? Now, the operation would be successful, but he'd be dead within a year. I've decided not to operate. Yes, Professor. I want him kept under constant observation. If there's any change, particularly in the breathing, the, the report at once. I should be on call, sir. Dr. Dugo. You'd better get back to the patient, nurse. I've never heard such a brilliant diagnosis. There's only one, Professor Gouin. <laughs> No one else in the world could guarantee that poor fellow a month. If he lasts through the night without my ministrations, he'll live to be 90. I can't make love to you in a military overall. No. Oh, what's the matter with you? No, Etienne, please. I... I want to talk to you about Louise. No, I can't think why. Oh. Will it be your child? Possibly. I don't see it make any difference to us. Why should it? <laughs> back early. Pinewoods. Hmm? Oh, I've been polishing the furniture. Oh, I no, hope it's I all right. I haven't touched your desk. No. Oh, why have you come back early? Did you forget something? No, the commissioner wants a special departmental oh. report. All done by tomorrow. I'll never get it done in the office. Are you going to use the table? Yes, and the floor. I'll take care of the table. I, I've only just polished it. Are you going to take calls? No, otherwise there'd be no point in working at home. All right, I'll leave you in peace then. Madame? Oh, Monsieur Luca. Well, he's very busy. I don't really like to disturb this him. This is very important, Madame. You'd better come in then. Come through, please. Good morning, Madame. It's Monsieur Luca. I said I wasn't to be disturbed for anything sort of murder. This is murder, Patron. Hmm? Who the devil's this? Don't tell me. Ah, uh, Desiree, right? Yes. Desiree broke. Yes, your beat used to be between the Place Bigal and the Place Blanche. You did a little, a little uh, shoplifting on the side, wasn't it? Oh, that was 15 years ago. Yes, have you taken a murder now? She found the body, Patron. Do you think I'd be here to have anything to do with it? Me, with my record? All right, let's go into it. Sit down. Let's have a little Prunel. Prunel? Now, tell me what happened. Well, well a report came through this morning. The police first, please, mademoiselle. Madame, if you please. I've got a husband now. Oh. All right. Police first, madame. The murder was reported at 8 7 this morning. By me. I went to 115B Avenue Carnot and found the body of a girl on the second floor flat. Avenue Carnot? That's why I've come to you. It's a very wealthy district full of generals, senators, and so, so on. It gets all the full you, treatments. We have to put up at sergeants where I come from. You all has had my full attention, madame. Go on. The body was identified as that of a young woman called Louise Filon. She'd been shot through the head at close range. Who was she? I checked with records on the way down. She was known as a common prostitute. She moved from a small hotel in the Chappelle district about six months ago. Mm. After she'd left the hospital. She'd been there three months. All right, tell us the rest. Well, she knew me because I did the hotel and the hall and the stairs. So when she moved to this place, she said, would I care to do eight to 12? Wanted to keep up with old times, I should think. Who paid the rent? No idea. Mm. Never saw any men about? Mm, not to say see. 
Or what to say? Well, a man's dressing gown and slippers in a cupboard and a box of cigars in a drawer. She didn't smoke them. You never saw who did? Nope. Did you find anything? Not much. He was a mean devil, whoever he was. Never bought her anything. No nice clothes, no jewellery, not even a box of chocolates. Money? Oh, she never seemed to have much. These seem to be all her personal effects. Birth certificate. Get on to her parents. Good. One is a fair, I should think. Who's he? According to the concierge, he used to visit her in the afternoons. What's his name? I wouldn't know, only doing mornings. Now, you knew her before she moved, yes? Only to say good morning to. Come on, Desiree. If he knew her before she moved, we shall find out. You wouldn't uh, like us to think that you were hiding anything, would you? After all, you found the body. Police. <laughs> I might have known it. You tried to help them, they turn on you. What's his name? Pierre. Plays the piano. Where? In a nightclub called the Grelot. He wanted to marry her. He doesn't pay her rent, huh? Oh, it's just no use asking me because I don't know. Was the dressing gown his? I dare say he wore it. All right, Desiree, you can go. Well, what about expenses? I've gone out of my way. Yeah, Luca, I'll run you back. All right, come on, then I'm ready. Wait a moment. Is there any sign of a weapon? You think I'm going to wait all morning. You're wrong. No weapon. The concierge says this chap here visited her at 10 o'clock last night. Do we know what time she died? Between 9 and 11. All right, you better pick her up. Right away? Yep, why not? What about this other man? Oh, yes, I've a new car, no. He could be someone pretty big. Well, I'll worry about that. You find Pierre. Good. No, uh, leave those. Lunch? I've no intention of going out for lunch. I'm just going over to take a look at the Avenue car now. All right, lunch is at one. All right, well, I may be a little bit late. Yes, there's nothing new. They took the body away hours ago. Oh, the police. Oh, I thought you were the press. Please come in. I've just been up there. It's dreadful. Simply dreadful. You can imagine what I've had to put up with. But it's Inspector Vagray, isn't it? It's a nice place you've got here. It's a nice district. Do sit down. Oh, uh, thank you. No, I won't be long. Are all these leases, uh, all these flats on leases? Uh, three years minimum. I see. Did Louise Filon have a three-year lease? Well, you'll have to ask the agents. Mm. Uh, they represent uh, a well-known financier. Did she pay by check? Uh, Come now, you must know who paid the rent, don't you? The name on the check is Goyer. Goyer? Who's he? Professor Goyer. The surgeon? Oh, he's a wonderful man. Mademoiselle Filon was a patient. She rescued her from death. See, and uh, installed her here to look after her. Professor Gouin resides with his wife in the flat above. Is his wife aware of his interest in an old patient? I suppose presume so, otherwise. Otherwise? Well, he need not have brought her to this block. Hmm. I believe you, uh, you know this man, Pierre. Yes. Did he come up here at 10 o'clock last night? That's right. Came down again shortly afterwards? That's right. Where is the professor at this time? He came back from the hospital at 6 and left again at 8. His assistant called for him. I heard her say it was an urgent case. Hmm. When did he return? Just before midnight. Well... Yeah? 
I didn't actually see him, but... Uh, well, how do you know? Well, sometimes his sister-in-law spends the evening here. When she does, she always leaves when he comes back. Last night, she left at midnight. Oh, I see. Thank you, madame. Uh, uh, Courtney. Courtney. If Professor Guin or Madame Guin would like to get in touch with the police, ask the telephone headquarters and ask for Sergeant Luca. I will tell them. They may prefer to speak to you. Sergeant Luca is thoroughly competent. Uh. clean round the bend. Now, where's this man, Pierre? He should have been here an hour ago. We have nothing but trouble. Oh, relax, Louis. He'll be here. Oh, let's have a drink, then. Let's have a drink. I've been all my life. He coming down now? No, he isn't. We thought you were a new accordion. He's come for an audition. No, no, I'm not. What are you breathing this joint? <laughs> Police, eh? That's right. Ha, I thought as much. I'd have guessed you were a copper a mile away. What do you want? Nothing that you've got. Oh, come on, be friendly. We've nothing to hide. This is a well-run place. Have a glass of wine. What can we do for you? Your name, Pierre? Might be. Funny man, eh? Surname? Iro. Let's have your papers. Come on, come on. in 41 and given away to a nun father's name unknown mother's profession known everything else you'll find upon your file all right caruso when were you last inside 18 months ago Immoral earnings, if you really want to know. Louise Fillon's earnings? No. What did I drink, Knight? When did you see her last? What's all this about then? Did you see her last night? Pierre was here last night. All the time? What do you mean? I mean all the time, between 9 and 11. <laughs> you know, they're very cunning, these policemen. Yes, I went there. So what? What time did you see her last night? Come on, answer my question. She phoned me. What about? Ask her. She's dead. What'd you say? Shot through the head between 9 and 11 last night. <laughs> Hold it. You have a little explaining to do.
Dr. Paul. He's very busy, but well, you better come in. Dr. Paul. Huh? Oh, well, let's have some beer. Will you go in? Thank you. Hello, Doctor. Well, what's the trouble? Sorry to disturb you, but Luca was not in your office, mm -hmm. and your telephone seems to be out of order. Oh, yes, I left the receiver off. Is he still looking for the young man? There was one point of considerable interest in the post-mortem on Louise Filon. I thought I'd better come and tell you straight away. She was pregnant. Was she? How many months? Six weeks, no more. Uh, certain? Quite certain. I confirmed that death occurred between 9 and 11 last night and was caused by a small caliber pistol fired from about three meters. Here's your beer. Come have some beer, Doctor. Thank you. Doctor, what do you know about Professor Etienne Gouin? Gouin? Well, he's the finest surgeon in France. Some of his techniques are in use all over the world. Do you know him personally? Well, I've met him at conferences. What's he like? Utterly dedicated. Why? This girl was his mistress. Gouin? Really? You don't find it hard to believe? I'm afraid I have heard rumours about his behaviour with women, but mind you, I always discounted them. Well, there's obviously something to it. Do you really think so? Mm. Oh, some people are only too anxious to drag great men down to their own level. Yes, I agree, but it's not very pleasant to associate a great man with this sort of thing. But there's something unique about Goa and his accomplishments. Right, and for that very reason, I don't much like the idea of dragging him down. Uh, after all, he did pay Louise his rent, and he lives in the flat above. You're not suggesting that he killed her, are you? No. I should hope not, indeed. And even if... It... Even if he did, then? Uh... There are far too few great surgeons in the world. Speaking as an ordinary doctor... May go here? Luca? Yeah. I see. Ah, uh, well... Well, yes, you better keep on trying. All right. Lucas still trying to find Pierre, the girl's other lover. Mm. Had quite a chase, apparently. Is he your chief suspect? He was, but now I don't know. Can you give me a lift over to the young Lucas, no? Certainly, yes. No, finish your beer. Madame Gouin? Won't you come in? Thank you. I wondered when you'd come. Do you know who I am? Of course, you were downstairs earlier. I'm afraid the maid is out this afternoon. It's really your husband I wanted to see. Oh, he's at the hospital, in the theatre for the next two hours. <coughs> I'm glad you'd come. I was going to phone you. What about? This business. Right. You knew the young girl? Yes. How oh, well. I'd only seen her once. Uh, I knew, of course, that my husband had installed her here, and one night, about two months ago, she rang through in a state of panic. What was the trouble? He'd collapsed in her sitting room. I went down and gave first aid. It was what people call a heart attack. Did you call a doctor? There was no need. Why? I was a nurse before we married. Right. Was your husband in love with the young woman? That's the question I was going to ask you, Inspector. Do sit down, won't you? Thank you. May I tell you about my husband? Please do. He is, as you may know, a very great surgeon. Probably the greatest in France. So you think a lot can be forgiven him? I think so. Well, his name kept out of the papers. Is it possible? Thank you, no. You asked me if he was in love with Louise Pilon. 
fact is that my husband needs women as other men need drink. Was it your idea that she should move him? Yes, as a matter of fact, it was. Did you know that she'd been seeing a lot of a nightclub pianist? I listened to the midday news, but that was the first I'd heard of him. Oh, it didn't surprise me. In fact, if I'd known, on the whole, I'd have thought it was a good thing. I mean that she should be happy. Should your husband know? I don't know. It isn't important. He would have taken the same view. Did your sister know? I'm sorry? Your sister. She was here last night. I'm... Did she know what was going on? I'm very fond of my sister. She's the elder and she helped to bring me up, but she isn't... Well, she doesn't get on very well with my husband. Did she know about Louise Filon? I don't know. I think she may have guessed something. I may have told her something. Did she see your husband last night? Oh, no, she likes to go before he comes back. What time did he come back? What time? That's the question. I really don't know. We, we have separate rooms. Separate rooms? Yes. Was it before or after your sister left? My sister came because she knew that Etienne would be out. There was family business to discuss. I went to bed before she left. She has only a one-room flat, and she likes to sit here reading or knitting. I see. What's your sister's name, madame? Olivier. Antoinette Olivier. Thank you, madame. I won't keep you any longer. Oh, uh, when did you first know that the girl was pregnant? Inspector, you're telling me something that I didn't know. Oh, well, think about it. Yes, it, it needs hmm. thinking about. Where will I find your sister, madame? Uh, she's the librarian in the Place Saint-Sulpice. Thank you. <coughs> Although the door is open, this is a private room. I'm Inspector Maigret of Police Judiciaire. I see. And may I ask what you want with me? Your sister told me that you called on her last night. That is so. You spent the evening with her and left about midnight? It was 12.30 by the time I got home. I left when a certain individual came back. Do you often spend the evening with your sister? Not very often. Mm. She invited you? Huh? My sister telephoned me to say that her husband would be out. Why? What did he tell you? I haven't interviewed him yet. I assumed that you knew this woman in the lower flat was his mistress. There wasn't much of a secret. I suppose you haven't interviewed him because he's a famous surgeon, member of the Academy of Medicine and so on. There's half a page of it. I gather that you don't like him. I shall try not to be vindictive, but I've seen this coming for years. Put them here. Did you know that the girl was pregnant? It doesn't surprise me. Did your sister mention it? We never discussed the girl. Did you see him when he came in last night? Briefly. What impression did he give? The same impression that he always gives. What's that? That of a man who considers himself above the ordinary laws of decency and morality. Do you think that he killed Louise Filon? Who else? It might have been her young lover, Pierre. I think not. Why? Well, from his point of view, the whole arrangement was highly convenient. He might have been jealous. Do you imagine that Etienne Gouin wasn't jealous, too? He has his pride, you know. Don't you think that a man of his age would be furious when he saw a girl preferring a younger man? Did she? If you were to read the classics, you might understand a little more about human nature. He'd been paying for this gutter snipe for six months, and then he discovers she's having a younger man's child. When did he learn that? I don't know. How long have you known that the girl was pregnant? For about three minutes. I know it's not for me to tell you your duty, but it's quite obvious. And this man has no regard for human life. I thought he devoted himself to saving it. Oh, he's devoted to his own reputation. That's why he only undertakes difficult cases. Perhaps because other doctors can do the easy ones. Oh, even you are falling for the myth. They all do. It may make you more charitable to know that the crime is committed between 9 and 11. Professor Gouin left his apartment at eight, and by your own evidence, did not return till midnight. I've often wondered when he says he's working late at the hospital, what he's really up to. Your imagination is evidently highly developed. 
And no doubt you are taught not to use your imagination. I can understand that. But it really is completely beyond my comprehension why you haven't had this man to your headquarters for question. No doubt because he's a... I don't think a... you should say what you're about to say, Mademoiselle Olivier. Thank you for your advice. I accept it. As I am only a petty functionary of the state looking for a pension in six years' time, I shall say no more. Then that'll be all for the moment. to intrude at the hospital. You'd have found it difficult. I've been in the operating theatre for the last two hours. Am I holding you up? No, I only just started running a bath, but there's no hurry. Um, please come in. Oh, excuse me. You attend Professor Guin's operations? Mm, always. Always? Well, for the last ten years. Originally, I was his pupil. Did you attend him last night? Yes, there was an emergency call. What time is it? I picked him up outside his apartment at about eight. I suppose we reached the hospital, what, 30 minutes later? And what time did you finish? I must have driven him home towards midnight. When you reached the hospital, what happened then? Well, he examined the patient. It was decided not to operate unless his condition became critical. Did it? No, he didn't operate. He stayed in the ward all this time? No. Well, where did he go? He has an office at his disposal. He remained there all the time? Yes, he did. You sure of that? I was with him. Could you prove that? Why don't you ask Professor Gouin? Could the house doctor bear you out? People in hospitals have more to do than spy on each other. When did you first know that Louise Filon had been murdered? At midday. I read the paper in the doctor's restroom. Did you tell the professor? No, I had my notes to do. Did you mention it to him when you drove him home? Yes. Yes, I did. What did he say? He was not in a communicative mood. Do you think that he took her life? I was present when he saved her life last year. We were in the operating theatre for five hours. He was proud of his achievement. You think fast, Dr. Ducco. You've jumped two of my questions. But you get my point. Is it true that your relationship with the professor is not entirely a professional? <laughs> Are you as middle class as you sound, Inspector? Dr. Ducco, if my parents could have afforded it, I should have been a doctor. As it is, I'm a policeman. Nothing that you can tell me will shock me, but like a doctor, I prefer to proceed step by step. First, is your relationship other than professional? And then, are you lovers? <laughs> you know, I think you ought to be talking to Professor Gouin. You would appreciate each other. Thank you. Now, please answer the question. I admire the professor more than any other human being on Earth. We're often together for long periods between operations or traveling together in the provinces or abroad. Yes, Inspector, 
There are moments when our relationship is other than professional. How do you get on with his wife? Cher man. She looks upon me as a sort of servant. She was a nurse and I'm a doctor. She has to maintain her position in her own eyes. It isn't a happy marriage? Let's say Germain couldn't make him unhappy. Could Louise? Mm, no, not in my opinion. He wouldn't leave his wife to marry Louise? No, I'm sure not. To marry you? He's never thought of it. Have you? No, Monsieur Maigret, I have no intention of marrying. Not even Etienne. What about Louise, had she? Oh, I don't know her well enough. I didn't know her well enough. You knew she was pregnant? Yes, I did. When? A few days ago. Who told you? He mentioned the fact. Or rather, he said quite casually and quite ironically, I believe Louise is pregnant. And what did you say? Nothing. Let me skip a few questions. Did I kill Louise? No, Inspector. Look, I'm sure you've got a lot more questions and my bath's getting cold, so let me try and answer them for you. Hmm? You suspect that my alibi for Etienne and Etienne's for me could be motivated by our functional need for each other. You're looking for a motive. A motive for passion. And you come up against the difficulty of defining love. Oh, yes, in police court language, I loved Etienne. So did his mistress, so did his wife, and for all I know, so do ten other women, half of whom will tell you that they hate him. He's a, he's a force of nature. And nature protects her children. She protects them against bourgeois mentality, against police inquisition, against... And against themselves? Yes, I'm sorry. You realize that I shall have to interview the professor? I'm not his protector. Thank you, Dr. Dicko. You've been most helpful. Three hours and nothing's come through yet. Check with the railway police again. You must have jumped the train in that marshalling yard. Oh, confound that phone. Oh, it's a glorified telephone boy around here. Take that down to the dispatch on your way. Now, come on, get wheeling. If you're here for night watch, it's down. There we go. Hello, Luca. Uh, uh, Bertrand. Uh, well, I was in the duty room, spreading the net to pick up Pierre. Uh, <laughs> yes, Bertrand. Professor Gouin. And Dr. Dicko. Good, right away. My lucky day. Communications. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, uh, Jacques, tap in on all ingoing and outgoing calls. Professor Gouin, 115B Avenue Carnot, and Dr. Dicot, 153 Rue des Acacias. Everything on tape. What? Huh? Yeah, but uh, now look, this is urgent, priority plus, so get cracking. Don't lose your sense of humor, Luca. <laughs> Find him. He didn't. I came by myself. Oh, well, that a beggar? Am I pleased to see you? <laughs> Luca. Yeah. Do you think you could find some beer and sandwiches? What kind? Oh, well, better make him chicken. They won't run away. <laughs> now then. Look, I didn't kill her. No. You believe me? Yes, I think so. Look, I swear I didn't kill her. All right, sit down. You can smoke if you want to. Now, let's start at the beginning. Was she alive when you called to see her last night? Of course. Mm -hmm. And when she telephoned you, <clears throat> did she say what you wanted? No. I thought I knew her. I thought she decided to pack it all in and come away with me. And you asked her to? Oh, look, I begged her to. Mm. I loved her. And what did she want to tell you? I think you know. Mm -hmm. Do you think the child was yours? I would have made it mine because it was hers. Was she glad about it? I don't know. I, she was odd. She didn't seem to be able to make up her mind what to do. What might she have done? Well, she might have married me or married the old man. He's not as old as that. He's 55 at least. Would he have married her? I don't know. She seemed to think he wanted to divorce his wife. 
Was that what she wanted? No. No, but she was frightened of being hungry again. Well, she would have been with you. Oh, we would have managed. So nothing was decided? No, I'd get back to work. If she had suddenly said to you that she was going to marry the professor, would you have killed her? Perhaps, I don't know. But no, not with a gun. In fury, in, in despair. I, I loved her. Beer's coming up. Another tape. Same address? Yeah, five minutes ago. Wait outside, please. Bye. Sir, I have time to call off the hunt. Otherwise, first officer that sees you will bring you straight back here. You couldn't catch me before. <laughs> Don't drink my beer on the way up. Well, look, there's one thing. Yeah? She's got no parents and no relatives. I, I'd like to see she's buried properly with her name on a stone. All right. If there's no other claimant, you shall have her. Okay. There won't be. All right, look up. Let's hear it. Desiree Boat. I found something there. I found a pistol. Your pistol. I thought you might like to have it back. The right price. Would you like to buy it from me? No answer from the professor. No. Pick up that blackmailing old hag. We want that gun. Good. Bigly. Yep. Look up. Yes. I see, did she? I see. All right, I'll come over. No, no. What was that? That was the professor reporting the call from this area. Lucky for him. Yes. Was his gun, though? Hmm. No, here's the sandwiches. Good, thanks. He wants to see me. I should have thought you'd have wanted to see him before now. There's always plenty of excuses for putting off the things that you don't want to do. Perhaps not. I like my great men to be great. All right, I'll go. It's the police. Police? I rang them. I could deal with them. No doubt, but I will. But you must be so tired. A lot of questions. At I'll only have to answer them in the end. Will you wait in the drawing room? But Etienne, In please. the drawing room. Good evening. Shall I put your hat somewhere? Thank you. You go in. It's good of you to come. Will you sit there? Thank you. If you want to make notes, do. But may I say at once, wouldn't it be more rational to question me rather than bothering, bothering Dr. De Gaulle? Did you say that I'd bothered him? Uh, perhaps that's the wrong way of putting it. Hmm. Uh, I think that... Um, Dr. Decoe must be your closest colleague. Yeah? Oh, she's my assistant. Women like to convince themselves of their importance. Is she in love with you, Professor? To the extent that she'd be in love with any superior, as long as he was famous. Mm, I got the impression that she'd commit perjury for your sake. Without a moment's hesitation. My wife has also been in touch with you. And she told you? Well, like Dr. Decoe, she told me of a conversation with her. Mm -hmm. Have you dealt with the Bright Woman? I'm expecting a call about her any moment. My assistant, Duke, I will call me here. Of course. Uh, when did you miss the automatic? I didn't miss it. It was kept in this cabin. Loaded? I can't be sure. There was ammunition. I bought it four or five years ago when I thought I'd be operating in Indochina. I didn't go. Mm -hmm. You use some of these? A few practice shots at the time, four or five. I had forgotten all about it until this woman demanded money. What did you say to her? Nothing. I rang you. Did you tell your wife? Well, she advised me to come to terms. Did she? Women like to cast themselves in the role of protector. We mustn't think of them as rational beings. No, no, I agree. I'm glad you understand. Well, your wife seems very understanding, too. According to her, she wasn't jealous of the girl below. Do you believe I am? Was she pretending? Shemaine was a nurse when I married her. 
Hmm. Why did you marry her, Professor? Were you in love with her? I thought she'd make an excellent wife. Hmm. And what did you got to offer her? One day she'll be Etienne Goan's widow. According to your wife, she suggested that Louise Filon should move here. Yes, yeah, so she did. I, I never thought, never thought of it. Um, I didn't even know the flat was vacant. Were you in love with Louise, Professor? That's the second time you've used that word. Love is a term which does not define anything known to science. Well, let me help you to define the relationship. Were you jealous of Pierre? Well, I would prefer that he never existed. And uh, what were the girl's feelings towards you? Naturally, she, she spoke of affection and gratitude, but the, the truth is simpler than that. She didn't want to be poor again. Hmm. Was she in love with Pierre? Oh, his sister, by the word. I should say that she, she needed a, a sentimental attachment. You know. Women like to complicate their lives, perplex themselves, and believe that they have a choice. Mm. Were you ever afraid that she would leave you? Well, she claimed to be thinking of it from time to time. And were you ever afraid she might? No. Had you made any provision for her? A life policy in her favour. Had you also made out a life insurance in favour of Dr. Decoe? There was no need. When I die, she'll attach herself to my successor. Mm. Hello. No, it's for you. Thank you. Would you rather take it to the hall? Yes, I would. Thank you. Good evening, madam. Good evening, Inspector. Is there another extension here? My wife's room. Shall I... Uh... Thank you. No. Hello. Look out. Ah, Petron. I've got the automatic. I sent it over to the technicians for checking. Mm -hmm. I've got the bro woman here making a statement. When she's finished, I'll take her over to headquarters and have her charged. Where are you speaking from? The Batignol police station. Number? Central 2357. 2357. Now, wait there, Luca, for a call from me. I shall need your help in making an arrest. It's difficult not to overhear what you were saying. That surprised you? I think you're a little premature. Of course, it's my weapon. But if I were in your place, there are a great many other questions I should want to ask. In making a diagnosis, we're taught to eliminate all possible alternatives before making a, a statement. Yes, but don't you find halfway through a diagnosis that you have a sort of instinct what the answer is going to be? Yes, of course. And a man has experienced yourself to be able to take shortcuts not allowed to a student. Whereas in your case, once you've made an incision, it's too late for second thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see you're entitled to put more faith in instinct. However, an arrest isn't fatal. There's always a trial. Exactly. I have much more latitude. Mm -hmm. Still, uh, a wrongful diagnosis could be harmful to your career. Well, it depends largely on the cost to public funds. Public funds? <laughs> yes, I, I could tell you something about that. Well, I, can I get you a drink? Thank you. Uh, port or brandy? Cognac, please. Mm -hmm. What are these other questions you would ask if you were in my place? The attitude of various people towards the girl's pregnancy. You'll forgive me, uh, I don't take alcohol. What was your attitude, Professor? Well, I realised I'd have to provide for the child. You thought it was yours? She would have sworn that it was. Mm -hmm. Have you ever wanted a child? Whatever for? I see. There's no good asking what Pierre thought. That leaves your wife and Dr. Decoe. Or was anyone else interested in the child? No, Dr. Decoe, my wife, asked me what I intended to do. Your wife asked you? Yes. She knew? No, I told her. When? Oh, two or three days ago. I said I should recognize the child, and that's all there was to it. Was she very upset? Yes, she was upset. Is there any need to tell her so soon? Well, I, I suppose not. It gave you a subtle satisfaction to upset your wife and your assistant. Hmm, perhaps. Either of these women might have terminated your association with the girl. By shooting her? That's what happened. They both hated her, and they both may have had the idea that people capable of putting such ideas into practice are rare, fortunately, for you. I must ask you, Professor, if you killed Louise Filon. You've been asking me that ever since you came here. 
If that is your diagnosis, it is incorrect. Dr. Tocqueau can give me a perfect alibi. So your assistant may have a use after all. Oh, I've never doubted her usefulness. No, you knew that she would perjure herself for your sake. So she's not able to give you an alibi. Hmm. I have to admit that. You may be surprised to know that she avoided my direct questions. What happened last night at the hospital, Professor? I saw my patient return to my room. At what time? Nine. I saw my desk clock. And? The house surgeon had instructions to fetch me under certain circumstances. Uh, did he? An hour later. Sure of that? I am sure of that. Dr. Lauerman is sure of it, too. We proceeded to the ward, inspected the patient. That took half an hour. During the previous hour? I was with Dr. Tocqueau. Can you prove that? Not if you don't believe her. Was Dr. Tocqueau with you when Dr. Lambin came to fetch you? She saw Dr. Lambin. He did not see her. She was partly undressed, so she hid behind the door. I realize I've been foolish enough to put my trust in a woman who fears public opinion. I'll come down to headquarters with you, Inspector. I uh, assume you'll allow me to telephone my lawyer. Professor, it was you who suggested that I eliminate alternatives. Will you let me do that? Expert evidence shows that Louise Filon died between 9 and 11. Pierre saw her at 10. And when he says that she was alive when he saw her, I accept that, because they were in love. That is a term acceptable to a policeman. Luckily for you, I also accept your explanation that Dr. Decoe hid behind your office door at 10.30. You then spent 25 minutes in the ward. So you couldn't possibly have got back from the hospital to here in time to shoot Louise. You would have made an excellent diagnostician. Do you mind if I make a note of the time? They're meaningless, unless you also accept my diagnosis of human nature. May I use your telephone? Of course. I'll get you another drink. Hello, Luca. Luca, get back to headquarters and ask the prosecutor's office to make out a warrant for the arrest of Antoinette Olivier, chief librarian, Saint Sulpice. The charge is murder by shooting of Louise Filon. Instinct? Three women had access to your automatic. Your wife, Dr. Deco, and your sister-in-law, Antoinette. Now, although you don't accept the meaning of the word love, only one of those women really hated you. Antoinette? The automatic was left by the body. Now, a woman who loved you might indeed have killed that girl, but... Would she also try to incriminate you? You're quite wrong, Inspector. I killed Louise. Even Maigret can make a mistake. I hate him, too. Far, far more than Antoinette ever could. Do you hear that, Etienne? I hate you! I did love him once. So he doesn't know the meaning of the word. Because I loved him, I was ready to put up with everything. His coldness, his cruelty. Even as women, all of them. Until you came to me and told me that this girl was going to have a child. And that you were going to recognize it without even knowing or caring whether it was yours or not. You knew I always wanted a child. And it was hers. It wasn't even yours. That's why I killed Louise. Oh, God, I wish it had been you. You're a stupid job, man. Antoinette will never have been convicted. And you think that I'd let my sister go through all that for you? Can you wonder that I hate him? Aunt Manette knew what I was going to do and she implored me not to. She said I ought to divorce him. Oh, you'll never, never understand the meaning of the word love. It can't be diagnosed. <laughs> he thinks I'm a fool to confess. <laughs> I'd love my sister as much as I once loved him. Here. Drink this. What number do you want? My wife is entitled to the best lawyer of France. At this moment, she is entitled to your understanding. Oh, 
perhaps I have made a mistake. But you've been saved from making a very great mistake. Isn't that so? Come on, eat it while it's hot. You know, he still thinks that I made a mistake. Who does? Professor Guin. We had a lot in common. He was a great man, but... Uh, he doesn't understand what makes people tick. Try the spoon. Mm. You know, it could have been Antoinette, but I knew it wasn't. Her hatred for Guam was merciless, but... Cold. There was more than that hate behind the death of Louise. But I had to use Antoinette to find it. What are you talking about? Something that you would understand. Love. 